Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back for our first meeting in September. I hope everyone had a great summer and uh, it's back to business now. So um, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the adequate notice of compliance statement? Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the city clerk's office in preparation of the open meeting notice dated August 27, 2020, which was properly distributed and posted per statutory requirements. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, and now the roll call, please. Mr. Bowman? Here. Ms. Harrison? Here. Ms. Little? Here. Mr. Naidu? Here. Mr. O'Sullivan? Here. Mr. Vartan? Present. President Fox? Here. Okay, moving on. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and um, uh, Julie Keenan, would you like to join? Would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> so, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance. to the flag of the United, United States of America and, and to the, the Republic for which it stands, which it stands. And one nation, one nation under, God. under God, indivisible, indivisible. With, liberty with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. Okay, thank you. Um, now moving on, Madam Clerk, would you please read the notice regarding closed session and hearings and comments? A closed session meeting is authorized by state statute was announced and held prior to the start of this meeting and the known items for discussion were listed on the published closed session agenda. Please be advised the council meetings are broadcast live on Comcast channel 36 and Verizon channel 30 and rebroadcast on Thursdays and Saturdays on Hometown TV on Comcast 36 and Verizon 33. This meeting is also being streamed live through YouTube. To view this meeting via YouTube, please visit the city website at www.cityofsummit.org and click on the YouTube icon at the top of the homepage. While this council meeting is being broadcast live and members of the governing body are participating remotely, steps have been put in place to accommodate public input during this meeting through public notice dated August 27, 2020, which provided information for those wishing to participate during public comment periods at this council meeting. Public comment will be permitted at specific times as outlined in the agenda. Please refrain from commenting until solicited by the council president. For those members of the public who wish to make a comment during a designated public comment period, please use the raise hand feature and you will be called upon by the council president unless you're using an electronic device to follow the meeting agenda or need it for professional emergency contact purposes, please turn it off. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now on to minutes for approval. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes, the regular clo um, closed session minutes of July 28th, as well as the special meeting minutes of August uh, 18th and June 29th? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Um, on to reports. Madam Mayor. Good evening, Council President. Thank you very much. And good evening, everyone. Happy uh, first day of September. Um, for just a few short um, reports. First of all, um, as many of you heard me say over the summer and the spring, um, please sign up for emergency notifications. Um, it is the best way to get information on a timely basis from the city without having to check the website every day. It's just emailed right to you. So what you do is you go to the City of Summit um, website, especially if you don't use Facebook or Twitter, and you sign up for general and emergency notifications on the city's website. For general notifications, you can pick from a range of categories that may interest you, such as parking, public works, public safety, and public health. SwiftReach is the official notification system used during storms, power outages, and to deliver essential warning messages to the community. Some of the emergency notifications are sent from a phone number that has been flagged by some phone service providers as spam. Please program 908-608-8051 into your contacts so that you do not miss important information from us. And the City of Summit website is cityofsummit.org. And that phone number again is 908-608-8051. Um, my in-person office hours are on Mondays from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. 
and on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to noon. Please stop by to see me if you have a matter to discuss or an idea to share. If you're unable to meet during my office hours, please email me at nratistcityofsummit.org and we can arrange to speak by phone or meet at another time at your convenience. I, I meet people all the time at all, all, times, all kinds of places. Um, Union County Votes. Please check the website uniondcountyvotes.com for important information about the upcoming November 3rd general election. Every registered voter in Union County will automatically receive a vote by mail ballot for the November general election as ordered by Governor Murphy. You do not need to apply for a vote by mail application for the November 3rd general election. The Union County Votes website has information on frequently asked questions including ballot tracking and drop box locations, as well as in-person voting opportunities. And then lastly, I wanted to thank the Summit Board of Education, the teachers, the administrators, the children and the parents for all the hard work that went into getting school started today. Um, we're in uncertain times, but a vast majority of Summit children and parents wanted to go back to in-person learning and that's what we're trying. That's what they're doing. They've planned really hard. They both. They've looked at everything. So good luck to all the children back to school. I'm sure you enjoyed seeing your friends and teachers and good luck throughout the school year. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And now on to Michael Rogers, our city administrator. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll be brief, uh, two items. Uh, city Hall operations uh, effective on Tuesday, September 8th. City Hall will return to its normal operating hours from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. Uh, we will be closed on Monday, September 7th uh, in, in an observance of Labor Day holiday. And then my final item, uh, the City of Summit has recently been awarded with a Municipal Innovation Award from the Municipal Innovation Summit for our free market program. Uh, congratulations to the many high school and middle school students and community volunteers that have helped to run the free cycle in, uh, initiative since 2008. Uh, we look forward to the next event in our new building. Uh, and until that, that time there is a virtual summit free market page where summit residents can share yard sale quality reusable items. And that's all I have for this evening, Council President. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and now on to my report. So I only have two items as well. First is contact tracing. So if you or someone you recently came in contact with has COVID, you'll be contacted by a contact tracer. And they're calling with life-saving information that will keep you, your loved ones, and our community safe. It's critical that you answer the phone. Your help is the key to stopping COVID-19 and protecting your loved ones. Uh, it is important to note that your inf information is confidential. Your name and your COVID status will not be released to your contacts. Um, secondly, uh, outdoor dining has been extended and uh, there's also some new indoor dining opportunities that have just been allowed. So at our last common council meeting, we extended outdoor dining on Maple Street and we added some additional parklets and that will be in effect until November 30th. By executive order, the state of New Jersey is allowing indoor dining at 25% capacity effective this Friday, September 4th. Um, we've recently heard some complaints about people without masks waiting for tables or chatting with friends who are seated in the dining area while standing on the sidewalk. And the executive orders require that anyone who is not seated at a table must wear a mask. And this includes while you're waiting for a table and also when you're uh, entering or leaving dining areas. So please comply with these uh, rules. It makes... It, it makes everyone else feel safer who are, you know, people who want to pass on the sidewalk, who feel uncomfortable when people are gathering without masks. So um, we'd like to continue having the outdoor dining as well as now the new indoor dining, but it, it means that everyone needs to cooperate and do their part and wear their masks. Um, it's a credit to all of New Jersey that we are now uh, recovering so well and we're reopening continuing to reopen. Um, one thing I'd like to note is in the last two days, we've had two new cases and we are trying right now to find out um, the ages of those, uh, those people who've been diagnosed with COVID. Um, what we do know is that they're not older uh, residents that have been diagnosed. And you know, when you go downtown and you take a look at who's running around without masks, a lot of younger people are not. So I 
urge you to, uh, if you're a younger person, to please be wearing a mask. And if you have kids or grandchildren, please encourage everyone to be wearing masks. It's so important. And if we want to continue to reopen, we need to do this. So um, I uh, thank you very much for everyone doing their part. Uh, and I'm just going to turn this over now quickly to our fire chief, Eric Evers, who wants to just do a quick report on what happened with the fire this past week. Thank you, Council President, Madam Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Just want to give a quick little um, recap. Um, as may, residents may or may not know, we had a pretty devastating fire last Thursday that displaced two families on Morris Avenue. Uh, we have a great working relationship with Springfield and Milburn Fire Department and Union County Mutual Aid. And without the resources and their assistance, even though it was a pretty tragic fire, it could have been a lot worse. That part of town are houses that are in pretty close proximity to each other. And with these agencies assistant, we're able to keep that fire to the house of origin, prevent further damage uh, to the area. Uh, there were two families displaced. Um, the Summit Police Department, the valuable uh, resource at that fire, they assisted us, assisted the families with the Red Cross, as well as uh, some of the EMS who provided rehab for our firefighters and um, the agency that assisted us in the fire. Um, also, the other Fellows First Foundation stepped up, as always, and with this, the community's generosity raised, I think, over $23,000 to, to help support these families and pick up their pieces and get their lives back together. They did, they did lose a lot of valuables in their homes, so that money was very well needed, so I know they appreciate it. And so I want to have the fire department thank everybody for coming out and assisting the families. And as always, you know, some the community comes together on times like this, and we really appreciate it, and the families appreciate it, so thank you. Thank you, Chief, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that no one was hurt, and um, the response was excellent, and um, and as usual, our community has stepped up. So that's that's all good news. And I wish both families well as they resettle. Um, and now moving on, we've got um, a presentation. So we have uh, Julie Keenan, the president of the Summit Foundation, who's going to speak about the foundation to us. So thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Council President. Thank you all, all of you for um, for having me. And, uh, and thank you all of you for what you do for Summit. Um, very appreciative. So um, I have a, a, a presentation that I think Rosemary is going to share her screen. Um, so um, hopefully this will work. Everyone can hear me, I assume. So <laughs> Rosemary, go ahead and put it up. And, um, and then I'll just, it, it may be obvious when it's time to change slides, but um, I can signal you if not. Okay, just give me a moment here. Yep. Joys of technology. Oh, yes. Give me one second. Uh, Julie, do you want to start speaking on it as I attempt to uh, find this thing? <laughs> okay, do you, um, I mean, alternatively, I could share mine if that, well, go ahead, whatever you want to I'm do. I'm not sure that you can, uh, but if you want to give it a try, uh, I think, hold on. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Let me see if I can find it. Hmm. Let me do this. I'm going to try one more thing. Give me one second. I think I might have. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
I apologize. It was working before when I tried this, and all of a sudden it's not. Julie, could you get started and just tell us a little bit about the Summit Foundation while people sure. are waiting? Sure. Okay. Or, or Rosemary, do you want me to just try and share my screen? Would yes, please. Good? Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. You might have to give permission I to do to that, Rosie. What happened? Okay. Let's see here. Uh, I think I can. Hold on. No, I can't do it. I think you have right to give permission. Now I can. Yeah. Now I can. Yep. Okay. I just made you a co-host. That's why. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Any luck? There you go. Okay, I apologize. Okay. It's um, it's not exactly in the format that that you want to see it, but um, well, hold just on. double click on the first uh, number one slide on the left. It should make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try view. Try view. <laughs> Is that better? There you no. go. Okay. Um, okay. Um, again, everybody. Uh, so I'm here from the Summit Foundation. I'm the president. Um, and I just want to give you a little bit of an overview about what we are, who we are, and what we do for our community. Um, so we, uh, our mission is pretty simple, we promote philanthropy. Uh, we provide funding for the nonprofits that are in our community that strengthen our town and we encourage others to do the same. We're, um, we're a community foundation, that means we're a tax exempt public charity that pools donations to support the summit area. And all the assets that we have are invested and put back in the community as a long-term consistent and stable source of funds for nonprofits that serve our neighbors. We've been, um, we've been at this for a long time. We were founded in 1972, so we'll be 50 years old in about 18 months. Uh, and, um, and this work is done by a board of 21 local residents. We're all volunteers. We have no paid staff. And together with the people of Summit, the foundation has invested, invested a considerable amount of money into our community through grants, through scholarships, and donor advised distributions over the past decade. Um, that amount of $8.6 million is actually uh, a little over $9 million at this point um, because of what we've done in the past few months. So who are we? Um, we're, uh, as I said, we're 21 board members. We're actually 20 board members um, at this moment. And you know, people are the essence of every organization. We're, we're no different. Um, our board brings a, a wide range of talents and backgrounds with extensive work and voluntary experience in education in the arts, in business, in local government, in healthcare. Uh, it's a very thoughtful, hardworking group, and it's really a privilege to, uh, to work with all of them. Uh, so we invest in the community with, uh, with, with our assets. And um, as of the beginning of this year, we had about $18 million, a little over $18 million. Um, the majority of that sits in endowed funds. And we, and those are managed for the, for the long term. And we make grants out of two of these funds. Um, the first one is the foundation directed grants, which is that big blue area that you see. And the second is um, the scholarships, which is the orange, which is about $1.3 million in endowments. And we give scholarships to high school graduates. Um, our goal is to spend 4% of our assets every year. Um, and that allows us to grow our corpus to, um, to permit future grant making. Um, we are here, um, we've been here 50 years. We wanna be here another 50 years. Um, and we wanna be able to meet the needs of Summit 
in the future. So we don't know what those needs will be, but we are really here for the, uh, for the long term. We also manage um, and invest funds for um, donor advised funds and for pass through funds. And that's the gray uh, area and the yellow area. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So just focusing more closely on the foundation directed grants and scholarships um, for a moment, that was the big blue and the orange wedge. Um, those assets have enabled us to, um, to put up more than $6 million back into Summit over the past 10 years. Um, we've made grants in virtually every service area um, imaginable and have really been able to adapt to the needs of the community. Just a few examples of the things that go into these, these boxes, these squares, hopefully you can see them. So under health and medical needs, uh, about $770,000 uh, are grants to places like Overlook and Trinitas Hospital for a wide range of services. Um, grants to the Summit First Aid Squad for laptops and other equipment to help them respond to emergencies. Um, grants to groups like Kinder Smile, which offer free dental care to underserved children in our area. Under civic and community, it's a pretty broad category, but includes things like CASA of Union County, which supports the volunteers who help children in foster care. It includes our grants to the Summit Conservancy for the build of the free market, which um, was recently completed. Um, uh, it includes um, as well the Summit Free Market, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the Summit Park Line, um, grants to the Summit Area YMCA for programming, for bridges. They just recently completed their backpack program for uh, school children, and, and we provide funds for that. Uh, Grace Food Pantry, which everyone knows has been just vital during the pandemic. Family Promise, the Community Food Bank, which as I think you know, delivers Meal, weekend meal plaques to our schools for families who are experiencing food insecurity and the Arboretum among, among others. Um, senior care and enrichment includes the many programs that SAGE offers for seniors and their caregivers in our, in our area. Things like Continual Arts, which runs a senior sing program and some, some, uh, some adult programming that the public library does. Moving down to children and adults with disabilities, um, that includes like, things like programming and equipment for Pilar Care, which is the Cerebral Palsy Center for Northern New Jersey. Uh, programs like Spilled Children's Specialized Hospital, uh, programming for people with special needs at The Connection, grants to Our House for their work with disabled adults, and parent-infant programming at places like the Summit Speech School. The arts and culture um, includes uh, most of the performing arts groups that enrich our community, as well as programming at the Virtual Arts Center, which as everyone knows, serves the entire state, but is headquartered here in our town. Education programs uh, have supported training for local volunteers at the Student Partner Alliance, ESL classes for adults and children, and support for an outdoor classroom at the Learning Circle. And then finally, in the right top corner, as I mentioned, we award um, college scholarships um, on the order of about $50,000 a year. It's totaled uh, $580,000 over the last 10 years. So, um, so that's, that's basically the, the grants and the scholarships that, that, you know, sort of a quick overview of the kind of things that we do. Uh, if we look just particularly at the, the foundation directed grants, I just wanna uh, tell you a little bit about our process. We have uh, two competitive cycles a year where grantees submit proposals to us online we have a grants committee that reviews all the proposals, uh, visits with the applicants and makes recommendations to our full board. And for the past few years, we've been able to make between 35 and 40 grants per year, uh, totaling about $600,000. Um, this year has been a, um, a very different year with, uh, with COVID. When, um, when the pandemic hit in, uh, in mid-March, we made a, a key decision to, uh, to get some additional funds right away to some of the, uh, the agencies in town um, that were particularly hit hard or that we thought were gonna be particularly hit hard and that were beyond the frontline medical facilities that were at the forefront of everybody's mind. So we, um, we approved a total of $100,000 in emergency grants that went to seven groups. And those were the Connection, the Summit Area Y, Bridges, Sage, Grace's Refrigerator, the Volunteer First Aid Squad, and the Board of Ed. And uh, also at the start of the program, I think most of you are familiar um, with this, but we did help design and launch an effort to help our local small businesses known as Sustain Summit, the Sustain Summit Fund, 
um, was kicked off with a matching grant of $50,000 that the Summit Foundation provided. And then in June, we had a regular grant cycle and, um, and we authorized another $309,000. So, so far this year, we've, uh, we've put 400, almost $460,000 in uh, into uh, Summit in grants. And on top of that, another $50,000 in scholarships went out in June to college seniors. So this is just a, a, a big broad list of some recent grantees. I'm not gonna go through it, but it's, uh, it's, it's extensive. Um, just wanted to give you a quick sense of that. So in, um, in addition to, um, to that, we, as I mentioned, we have scholarships funds. So just speaking of that, about $50,000 that go to, uh, to local students annually. We have a similar scholarship committee that works with local high schools to identify students who meet our criteria. And then we, um, we have something called pass-through or community funds, where, um, uh, which was that small gray piece of our chart. So occasionally we will serve as a charitable bank, if you will, for groups, um, allowing them to raise funds for projects and public initiatives. Um, we provide the 501c status for them. We provide bookkeeping, insurance, audit, banking services to all these groups while they either perform a temporary function or get launched as their own nonprofit. And recently we've done this for the Summit Community Center renovation for Hometown Heroes. Uh, we served as the financial bank, if you will, um, or nonprofit bank for the Summit Public Art for about four years until they spun off as their own nonprofit just a few months ago. Um, we managed the Hubbard Scub Public Schools Fund and we recently just took on FLAG, which I think most people know is, a, is an organization that was started to enable people to make donations that are used to purchase meals from local restaurants. Those meals are then delivered to hospital staff um, and it's been particularly helpful during COVID and we're, um, we're serving as their um, parent 501c3, if you will. And then lastly, donors create donor advice fund at, uh, funds at the Summit Foundation as a way to manage their own giving. So we pool their assets to help them achieve better investment returns. And then we issue grants on their behalf as, as they designate. So they're, the timing, the amounts are up to the donors, but we do, um, we do manage those for folks. In addition to being a source for funds for established nonprofits, we have a really strong track record of working with others to find creative solutions to local problems. And we're really proud of our history of providing seed money to new organizations to help them take hold. And a couple of examples of that are an organization called Kremenos, which was started by a woman by the name of Dora Arias. She came to us many years ago as a breast cancer survivor, uh, an immigrant from Colombia who found herself translating for fellow patients that she met in her cancer journey. Uh, we gave her an early grant and that helped her take her passion into up to a whole new level. She founded Kremenos to help non-speaking English patients navigate the healthcare system in the face of a cancer diagnosis. And that organization is, uh, is in, still in existence today um, and, uh, and pretty well known in the medical community. Um, also in, in uh, just three years ago when the Summit Interfaith Council decided to offer race dialogues um, and anti-racism training for teens as part of the emerging national dialogue on the impact of race. Uh, we were there as well. We made a key grant to them to enable them to expand those dialogue groups and expand their training for our high school students. And I think we could argue that, um, that those are just as relevant, if not more relevant today than they were three years ago when they started. The, the dialogues are going on um, right now. A new session has just started uh, this summer. We're also really pleased to be thought partners um, with other leaders, um, sometimes bringing funds to the table, but often just working to convene groups. And a, a couple of um, quick examples of that, uh, a couple of years ago, we did a roundtable discussion with a number of grantees and the issue of food insecurity emerged as a major obstacle for families in town. And out of that, uh, a group came together that calls themselves the Hunger Coalition. It's a non, uh, just a coalition of nonprofits that work in this area. And they meet regularly now to make sure that, um, that they're coordinating as best they can to get food to summit families who need it as effectively and as efficiently as they can. And then last fall, um, out of some discussions with, um, uh, with the city and our public schools in Overlook, we ended up funding a community health worker for Overlook Hospital. Um, the issue was that there's a, high, a number of high-risk uninsured families who are using the emergency room 
for basic health. And, uh, and this um, community health worker is helping people navigate and um, get to a, uh, to a physician. As I mentioned before, um, in, over the past few months, we've, uh, we've been responsive to the, uh, the COVID crisis in early April, we did the $100,000 in, um, in emergency grants. Uh, we were talking earlier about the start of school. Interestingly, the smallest of those grants went to the Board of Ed, but it enabled them to instantly get um, hotspots to families who didn't have adequate Wi-Fi service for online education. So it was a, um, it was a, a, a small amount of money, but a really effective, uh, effective grant. I mentioned also the, uh, the Sustain Summit Fund, which ended up, uh, so we, we made the $50,000 matching grant to start 450 local residents came together and donated to that fund to support local merchants at the beginning of the pandemic. And the fund raised uh, $350,000 that went to local businesses, which is a, um, I think a real only in summit kind of, kind of story. Um, that in turn um, led an anonymous donor to, um, to contact us and offer another $350,000 in grants to small businesses. So that amount doubled. Um, and the provision from, from the donor was that recipients would aim to pay the kindness forward by donating back to the Summit Foundation as the businesses emerge from the crisis. So we were really pleased to be, um, to be uh, on the front lines, if you will, and to be responsive and in a position to be responsive to, um, to a, you know, a, a, a really severe crisis. So that's, that's our story. Um, there's a lot of ways for people to get involved with us. Um, first of all, we can do more good for the community if people know about us. So we ask that, um, that you share our story, tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your clients. Uh, we, we really want people to know that we're here and that we're in a position to be helpful. Um, partner with us um, as you come across emerging leaders in our town um, or new nonprofits, or you confront developing issues or problems, uh, please let us know. Um, bring us into conversations with those people and about those issues. Um, we um, love bringing people together to try and work collectively for um, for the for the better good of our of our town, of our city. Um, we do a, an annual appeal every year. Contribute. We make a, a a December appeal for funds, and we welcome anyone's participation in raising money for the organizations that make Summit such a unique, unique community. And then um, as people are doing long-term planning, uh, if you're doing long-term financial planning, uh, we'd love to talk to you about creating a fund that can meet your philanthropic needs and goals to support the community now uh, and in the future. And then finally, you can learn more about us on our website, sub, uh, summitforever.org or contact any of our trustees for a personal conversation. We'd be delighted to talk to any of you. Uh, that's, that's all I have. Um, I really appreciate your time and your, um, your open ears, uh, open eyes, and uh, we look forward to partnering, partnering with all of you um, and anybody uh, going forward. I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. Yeah, thank you for this great uh, presentation. Um, do any members of council have any questions? Uh, David, council member uh, Nigel. Thank you, Council President. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just want to say two things. First, uh, with regard, a few years ago, we started Hometown Heroes. And I will say, when we started Hometown Heroes, those of you who recall from being on council at that time, we got that done very, very quickly as far as setting it up from the time that it was launched to the time that we needed it in Memorial Day. We would not have been able to do it without the Summit Foundation being there to help us uh, with regard to the funding. So. Uh, whenever people see all those banners going up, the way that it was done in that first year and then subsequently after that, to be able to do it that way was because of the Summit Foundation. And then secondly, and I would typically walk off the dais at this point in time because I'm going to put on my hat as one of the founders and officers of the Summit Conservancy and share with you all, that, and I think most of you know, that the Summit Free Market building that is completed basically right now and we hope to have it open in October, one of the initial uh, folks who, as far as, as far as foundation money that came through to us was actually the Summit Foundation. They gave us a, a, a fair degree of money in the initial stages when we were planning the uh, building and so forth and raising capital. And then now at the very tail end, when we desperately needed money to get it finished, again, they came through 
to help build the building. That free market building would not be possible uh, without the Summit Foundation. So uh, thank you, Julie, for everything you do for the community and thank you to the Summit Foundation. Thank you, David. We're, uh, we're pleased to be part of all of those, those efforts and, uh, and eager to be part of anything more. So uh, again, um, just spread the word. We're, um, you know, we're lucky to live in such a community. Thank you. Any other comments from uh, Council Member Little? Thank you, um, Council President. I just wanted to thank the foundation as well. I think we are incredibly lucky to live here in Summit. And I think um, sometimes we take it for granted that there's so many wonderful organizations that support our neighbors here. And you can just go on and on about um, all of them. Um, the Educational Foundation and Family First. And, and you know, you could just, we could spend the rest of the meeting talking about all the regular wonderful organizations. But Summit Foundation is really kind of an unsung hero, I feel like, in Summit. And they do so much and are really backstopping so many wonderful things that happen in this community. And they don't get a lot of press or there's not a lot of knowledge about them. So I'm really glad that you came tonight to tell people about the Summit Foundation. I hope we can keep highlighting everything that you do, um, because it really is just a tremendous organization and they do so much good in the community. So I, I wanna thank you, Julie. Um, they couldn't have anyone better at the helm than Julie Keenan, I'll tell everyone watching. Um, but all the trustees who put in the work for this, it, it really makes an incredible difference in the community. Uh, the one that um, a lot of people aren't aware of. And I wanted to thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Council Member Hairston. Thank you, Council President. And Julie knows I am a huge friend, uh, fan of the uh, foundation, love the name change. And um, I can only echo what David and Beth have said, but I have a spin on it because I come from 24 years in philanthropy and I want you to know that you are unique, you are remarkable in that you um, really champion nonprofits in a way that is exemplary. Um, foundations are under scrutiny now for being more of a tax shelter. And um, you all have just done a remarkable job of making sure that the nonprofit community is well supported. And so I just want to applaud you and tell you to keep up the good work. Um, th because the needs are only getting greater and uh, you're a model in giving out that 4%. Um, and you've got a great fund manager that's gonna allow you to stay in perpetuity. So uh, all the best and thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor. Thank you, thank Council you. President. Um, I just have to quickly add my thanks. And, and another thing that makes the Summer Foundation so amazing is that it's very flexible and nimble. Um, as David alluded to or said about the free market, right? That it was just quick and they were flexible. Also with the hometown heroes. Um, no way would we have been able to pull together the Sustained Summit Fund and Jumpstart Summit in such a few short weeks without the flexibility and the expertise of the, the Summit Foundation Board. So I, and that's when the, our merchants were just shocked and thrilled and you guys are amazing. So thank you, thank you. Thank Any you. other comments or questions from members of council. Uh, so I'm gonna open it up if any members of the public have any questions. Um, I'm gonna take that as a no. So um, unless anyone else has anything they'd like to add, um, I'd just like to say thank you so much, Julie, and thank you so much to the foundation. I've had the fortune of, uh, the good fortune of working with you several times as well. and. It's, you know, it always feels like a partnership and, you know, it's, there's a grant making component, but there's also a partnership component and we appreciate all the skill and knowledge that you bring to the table and helping us uh, craft some of these programs and really put together a program that works and is sustainable. So I appreciate all that you do and I hope we'll continue to partner in the future. Thank you. We look forward to it. So uh, with that, I think, um, if there are no other questions, we'll move on. Thank you so much. So um, now we're on to uh, public comments. At this point in the meeting, members of the public have an opportunity to comment on any member, any uh, matter that is not on the agenda. Um, I, okay, I see a hand. 
Okay. Um, Eileen Kelly. Uh, okay, go ahead. Good evening, Council. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eileen Kelly, and I live at 47 Woodland Avenue. Well, my question is regarding JCPNL. Uh, does the city have an estimated date for when our JCPNL rep will join a council meeting and provide a report regarding our most recent uh, power outage, um, as well as an overview just regarding the overall health of our local electric infrastructure? Thank you. Um, Mayor Redis, do you, you've been in touch um, with with our representative. Do you have a sense of that timing? No, I do not. They have not finished their internal review. Um, she has assured me that as soon as they do finish their review, that she's more than happy to come and speak at our council. And, and I told her that we had set up an ad hoc power outage committee um, that we are also starting work and we would not only be there to listen to her report, but have specific questions and things that we think and suggestions. But I do not have a date. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, are there any other comments from members of the public? Okay, so with that, the uh, comment period is closed and um, I'll move on to resolutions. So our first uh, set of resolutions, let's see, is um, we uh, finance council member of our town. Thank you, Council President. This resolution uh, 7338 certifies the 2019 audit review. So according to state law, every local government unit must perform an audit annually. Uh, this routine resolution uh, confirms Summit's audit was completed. I move to adopt this resolution. And I, I second it. Any comments from members of council? Okay, uh, any comments from members of the public? Okay, hearing no comments, all those in favor. Oh, Madam. Uh, uh, Madam President, uh, if I may, yes, I should have read uh, a roll call vote. If we could do it that way, please. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Could you, you read the roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Bowman. Aye. Ms. Hairston. Aye. Ms. Little. Aye. Mr. Naidu. Aye. Mr. O'Sullivan. Aye. Mr. Vartan. Aye. President Fox. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Moving on um, to the second finance resolution, please. Thank you, Council President. Resolution number 7336 uh, approves the 2019 audit corrective action plan. Uh, this resolution goes along with the audit uh, approval every year. Uh, this past year's audit corrective plan uh, included three items uh, and are dedicated Chief Financial Officer and her team uh, are working actively with all of the other departments to implement those actions. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Any comments from members of council? Council Member Bowman. I, you know, I was just going to say congratulations to our, uh, to the accounting staff because over the years they have, you know, the correction act and plan the list has been a little bit longer than three uh, action steps. So uh, congratulations to, to the, the staff having cleaned um, the audit up over the last four years since I've been on, on council. So uh, thank you very much. Um, any other comments? Okay, um, are there any comments from members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. So uh, moving on, we have a few items from law and labor. Council Member Bowman. We do, we do. Thank you, Council President. Uh, our first one up is law and labor ID number 7310, which is to renew the 2020-2021 liquor licenses. Um, this is important in these COVID days. No, um, so basically <laughs> they're renewing the liquor licenses for retail distribution. Basically there are 10 or nine licenses um we are reviewing three club licenses and nine retail consumption licenses for the year it's important to keep these licenses current as uh summit is fortunate to have nine consumption licenses with our population of twenty-three thousand people uh, i move this re resolution forward i second it 
Any comments from members of council? Any comments from members of the public? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, um, law and labor number two, council member Bowman. Yes, thank you, council president. Uh, ID number 7334 is to authorize extension of sick leave with pay uh, for T DPW employee pending closed session. As we discussed, this employee uh, will be uh, having sick leave with pay through December 24th. Uh, we hope this individual will uh, recover quickly and I move this resolution. I second it. Okay, any comments from members of council? Any comments from members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the last law and labor item, Council Member Bowman. Thank you. That's ID number 7344, which is to authorize extension of sick leave with pay uh, for our fire department employee through September 15th. Uh, again, as we discussed in closed session, this individual is scheduled to come back to administrative leave and uh, we move this, I'd like to move this resolution forward. I second it. Okay, any comments from members of council? Any comments from members of the public? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, and now we're moving on to safety and health. Council member Hairston, would you like to start with resolution number one? Thank you, council president. I am moving for resolution ID number 7295, which will confirm the appointment of a police uh, sergeant. And uh, as we know, with the retirement of our police chief, with the appointment of our new police chief and uh, promotions of captain and lieutenant, we had the opening of a police sergeant that is uh, at the jurisdiction of the mayor and uh, the police chief. The council gets to uh, confirm that appointment. And I am pleased to uh, put forward police officer Jonathan Garcia for the promotion to the rank of sergeant. And I second. Okay. And I would um, like to turn it over to our, our mayor to say a few words about Officer Garcia. Thank you, Council Member Hairston. Um, Jonathan Garcia grew up in Flemington and graduated from Delaware Valley High School. He attended William Patterson University, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in business management. Soon after college, Sergeant Garcia began working with the, within the small business division of AT&T where he traveled throughout the county assisting at the establishment of numerous sales offices. He then went on to work as an auto repair mechanic alongside his father at their family owned business in Westfield. In 2006, Sergeant Garcia was accepted into the Monmouth County Police Academy as an alternate route candidate. And shortly after his graduation from the police academy, Sergeant Garcia was hired as a sworn law enforcement officer with the Summit Police Department in July, 2007, beginning his career in public safety. Sergeant Garcia was assigned to the patrol bureau uh, where his duties consisted of patrol officer, bike officer, radar instructor, fire, firearms instructor, and field training officer. Sergeant Garcia has also held the role of officer in charge, which afforded him the opportunity to fill in as a supervisor in the absence of a sergeant or lieutenant and oversee the shift and the responsibilities tied to his role. Sergeant Garcia has taken great pride in educating other officers on the multiple aspects of policing through his years as a field training officer, firearms instructor, and radar instructor, while providing insight through his own training and experience. Sergeant Garcia has received numerous letters of appreciation and commendations from both citizens and the administrative offices of the Summit Police Department throughout his career. When not working, Sergeant Garcia enjoys surfing, snowboarding, and spending time with his wife, Christine, and their two daughters, Emma and Olivia. Um, in the process that which the mayor and safety were involved was an, an interview process and um, Sergeant Garcia showed himself to be highly empathetic and aware of the importance of the role of police in binding our community together. 
Um, and that's why I heartily endorse him. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Are there any comments from members of council? Okay. Uh, any comments from members of the public? Okay, hearing none. Um, uh, any other, uh, does anyone else from council wanna speak on the matter? Okay, so hearing nothing, uh, we'll move on. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations and welcome to office uh, to our new Sergeant Garcia. Um, and moving on to safety and health number two. Thank you, Council President. Uh, introducing uh, resolution number 7346 that authorizes the emergency purchase of a 2020 Ford utility police interceptor in the amount of $32,940. Uh, this resolution uh, being presented tonight is for the purchase of a vehicle to replace the second of two vehicles that were totaled back in April, May, when uh, our officers were engaged in a chase for stolen vehicles. The decision to purchase the standard vehicle over the hybrid was based on a few factors, including availability, pricing, funding allocation, and a necessity to replenish the patrol fleet in a timely manner. The vehicle purchase associated with tonight's resolution is from a dealer that has a vehicle in stock and available as we need immediate delivery. Uh, the ordering process at this point at, in this time of year comes with a lead time of 18 to 20 weeks. This is different from past acquisitions as the vehicle is not being acquired on the program due to the fact that funding is for a replacement that is being taken from an insurance settlement and there is no additional cost over and above the vehicle price. And the lease purchase program is over a traditional three year period would amount to a price within which is additional funding would be needed to be um, budgeted for. And so uh, I ask uh, council to authorize the purchase of the Ford Utility Police Interceptor. No, I second. And I... All right, uh, any comments from members of council? Council member and I do. Thank you, council president. Uh, I understand the reasons why uh, for this particular purchase, uh, we are going ahead and purchasing uh, a gas powered vehicle, a full, oh, I mean, a full gas powered vehicle, but I, I strongly encourage us for all the departments, whether it's police, DCES, parking, we need to look at hybrid vehicles, electric vehicles, and try to move out of just having the traditional, uh, you know, gas powered vehicles. It's, uh, we need to think of it comprehensively as far as our fleet. And as cars retire and get to the age where we know we're gonna need to change them, I think we need to have a policy in place that folks look at this very carefully. I understand that sometimes the upfront costs for such vehicles are higher than, um, than the electric version or the hybrid version, but one has to look at the overall usage. A lot of times our vehicles are used uh, for idling purposes, whether it's uh, for, for parking or DCS or for the police, and therefore electric vehicles in the long term can be more cost effective uh, if, if we use them. So I understand for purposes of tonight why we're doing what we're doing, but as an overall policy, we need to move to a different direction. Are there any other comments from members of council? Okay, uh, any comments from members of the public? Okay, all, um, so hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, so moving on to safety and health no number three, Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Council President. I am uh, moving ID number 7341, which is to authorize submission of the Firehouse Subs Foundation grant application uh, to execute a grant agreement in the amount of 24,000 $470.56. And um, this 
This grant is to purchase um, eight new sets of fire, fire, firefighter turnout gear. And this is protective gear that provides essential barriers between our firefighters and hazardous environments that they encounter every day. And this gear is fully compliant with the national fire uh, safety standards and will include one cost and one pair of pants. And um, uh, council president, if you would permit um, uh, our, our fire chief to say anything about this application, um, if, if we have time, um, if that's uh, okay. Um, uh, chief Evers, would you like to say something about this? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, anytime we get the opportunity to take it, take advantage of any kind of um, grant money, it's good for the city. It's help. It saves us. We do have a reoccurring capital line item that does replace turnout gear. So any alternate funding we can get off to helps out our department and uh, having this gear ready available for us. It is expensive. Technology is constantly changing on our gear. The prices are increasing from each year. So this funding will very, very much help us out to offset. Um, our gear and to one of our goals is is to provide a fireman with two sets of gear with all the contaminants they face every day when they go to fires the gear they wear has to be completely washed and decon that takes a little time so it's it's a good benefit to have an extra set of gear that's kind of our goal moving forward for the next five years to get everybody with uh, an extra set of on, on their neck gear just to help us kind of jumpstart that initiative going down the road so Thank you, Chief. Is, and this grant comes, it does not have a match. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No match. It's always, that's always nice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope we get it. Yeah. Um, any other? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, any comments from members of council? Any comments from members of the public? Oh, uh, council member Hairston. I'm sorry. So I didn't give, uh, I didn't actually move it forward for. Um, oh, whoops. <laughs> And then, yeah, so I am moving it forward for council approval. I second. Okay, um, so I guess we didn't have any comments, so um, I'm just gonna call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, so we're moving on to the last uh, safety and health uh, resolution, council member Hairston. Thank you, council president. And this is moving forward resolution number 7343 which is to declare a vacancy in the fire department. And that would be the retirement of our very long serving office manager, Nancy Fabrizio, who has uh, served this community and the fire department for more than 20 plus years in a wonderful way. And uh, we need to declare this vacancy that uh, we would like to have filled um, for October 1st. So I move this resolution forward to declare the vacancy in the fire department. A second. Any comments from members of council? Um, any comments from members of the public? Okay, um, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. So moving on, we have two resolutions from community programs and parking services. Council member O'Sullivan, would you like to get started? Thank you, council president. This is ID number 7318 to authorize reduced 2020 fee for the Summit Family Aquatic Center food concession 2017 through 2021. The city of Summit just completed year four of five uh, of a five-year contract with SA Food Associates. The total value of the contract is $21,000 per year for a total of $105,000. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our Community Programs and Parking Services Committee discussed reducing the vendor's fee that would allow him to sustain his business and provide food and refreshments to our members. The city solicitor, the community programs director, and SA Food Associates then negotiated a reduction of this year's fee from $21,000 to $7,500. The COVID-19 pandemic caused us to miss the Memorial Day weekend, which is a high revenue weekend. It reduced the number of days we were able to open by 25% and reduced the, the member capacity by half. 
Each of these factors was taken into consideration when settling on $7,500. The City of Summit has a good relationship with this vendor, and this fee reduction allows both parties to move into the final year of our contract in a positive way. I move this resolution. Second. Are there any comments from members of council? Uh, any comments from the public? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Moving on to uh, resolution number two, council member O'Sullivan. Thank you, council president. This is ID number 7330 to authorize the submission of Union County Kids Recreation Trust Fund 2020 grant application. So the Department of Community Programs is applying for funding through the 2020 Union County Kids Recreation Trust Fund grant program. The DCP intends to use this grant funding to improve the memorial basketball courts by installing new fiberglass backboards, resurfacing the courts, and installing new benches for all to enjoy. These are the premier courts in Summit that are used throughout the year by residents of all ages, as well as DCP and local sports organizations. The grant we are apl applying for requires a one-to-one -one match and a letter of financial commitment stating the availability of matching funds. The estimated cost of the court refurbishment is $118,500, so we are seeking matching funds of $59,250 from the 2020 Kids Recreation Trust Fund. Summit's matching funds are available. If approved, Summit has two years to complete the project. These courts were built in 2006 and have seen better days. So I move this resolution. Second. Any comments from members of council? I knew council member Naidu would have one. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, first of all, I wholeheartedly agree that the basketball courts and memorial field need to be done. I have been told by my younger son about the problems with that basketball court, especially uh, as backboard and, uh, and so forth. But I will also uh, say that we need to get the basketball courts at Tatlock done. So hopefully we get the grant here and next get some money for Tatlock's basketball court because that also needs to be done. Thank you. Um, and, uh, Council Member Bowman. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I, I guess I, I find that I agree the basketball courts need to be improved. I'm just staggered by the cost of $111,000 for, for an area that, and, and yes, it's a fiberglass backboard, but that just seems expensive. Um, hopefully when we get to the actual project and review it, uh, we aren't going to be encouraging such a, a cost. And I strongly recommend our department to, uh, to take a sharp pencil to the, uh, to the cost. That's it. Um, okay. Uh, well, I, I would just say, yeah, I would just add, uh, we don't have um, estimates. We don't have bids. Um, so this number is sort of a placeholder for now. Um, and uh, I would, I would, uh, defer to Mark right now uh, to, to speak up on behalf of that number. Uh, through you, Council President Fox. Go um, ahead. Councilman Bowman, yes, I, I received the quote from a company that actually has a state contract. Um, so we're using that number right now in order to um, hopefully get the grant from the county. I will be working with Aaron Schrager to look at potential alternatives um, to redo these the, the court surfaces. Part of the problem is the cracks are so deep, we can't just fill them and then re recoat um, because they're gonna return you know, year after year after year after year. So we are gonna have to replace it. Whether we go with this company or not, you know, that's still up in the air, but Aaron and I will be dis the discussing that in the next couple months. Uh, thank you for that clarification. Um, Mark, I had one other question for you. Um, my recollection was that both sets of basketball courts were in the capital budget this year. Is right. that correct? We, we have 75,000 for Memorial and we have 50,000 for uh, the Tatlock basketball courts as well. So, so Councilman Naidu, they're on the list as well. So we'll be taking care of those. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Is that slated for this year or is that 
or we're, it's in the budget this year and possibly next year yeah, to do it. P potentially um, spring of next year, fall, we'll see, because we're also going to be doing the track next year as well. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Any, yep. other, com any other comments from members of council? Any comments from members of the public? Okay, uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. So now we're moving on to capital projects and community services. Council Member Little. Thank you, Council President. Um, the first um, capital projects resolution is number 7339, and it's to authorize submission and execution of the 2020 Greening Union County grant application. So this is a grant application we put in for um, over the last few years with Union County, which funds our um, tree program. And this is a um, grant where we they will fund 50% of the trees that we um, that we plant. We'll be applying for this grant um, to supplement our tree planting program. The plan is for us to plant 250 trees in the spring of 2021. Um, that the county would, if if that goes forward, the county would um, pay for 50% of those. That would also be contingent on those uh, the other 50% of the trees being included in the 2021 operating budget. So I ask that we approve this resolution and submit this grant to Union County. A second. Any comments from members of council? Um, this is, um, I'd like to just point out, this is part of our goal to plant 250 trees a year for four years. And we're under, we, this would be the second year that we would be doing this. So I, I think we're, um, we're, I think this is a great program and I commend the Department of Community Services for, uh, for keeping on this and working so hard to find good locations and to, to coordinate all of this. So thank you. Um, any other comments from members of council? Uh, any comments from members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, moving on to capital projects number two. Thank you, Council President. I know that um, former Councilman Gold will be, would have been proud of that vote and support it. <laughs> um, moving on to capital projects number two is resolution 7332. This is a resolution to support the Morris Habitat for Humanities grant application to the New Jersey DCA for affordable housing trust funds. As many um, of those watching and those on council know, um, Morris Habitat for Humanity is working with the City of Summit um, on a housing project on the former um, Italian American Club. The city has um, committed up to $1.4 million towards this project and Habitat for Humanity is now um, applying to this state affordable housing trust fund for some funds to fund their portion of it. Uh, and this is just a, you know, a support in, in favor of their grant application to the state. So I ask that we would approve this resolution. Second. Any comments from members of council? Okay. Any comments from members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, so the last capital projects and community services resolution. Thank you, Council President. The last capital projects resolution is number 7329. And this is to authorize additional fees for our on-site vegetative waste grinding services contract. As many of us remember, we just had a destructive storm, as I don't even know if I can say it right, Azias, <laughs> that um, did a lot of damage in the city and caused a tremendous amount of um, storm waste to be brought to the transfer station. Um, we are coming up on the limits of our current vegetative um, grinding waste contract as a result of that storm. So this is to, um, we are going to exceed it if we have any more storm waste. So we are asking that the contract be increased by $50,000 to cover us for the rest of the year. And I ask that we approve this resolution. Second. Any comments from members of council? Uh, council member Nida. 
Thank you, Council President. Uh, uh, some residents have asked me whether or not we keep a track of how much uh, costs associated with storms occur. And we do actually do that. So just so folks know that we are keeping track of, of these types of expenses. And as, uh, as the mayor referred to uh, previously, uh, we are, when we have conversations with JCPNL, uh, we certainly will raise the issue of how much these storms are now costing us uh, as part of what our discussions will be with them. So um, just, just want to uh, address that. Um, okay, any other comments from members of council? Any comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. So now we're moving on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. So uh, now we're on to council members. Comments and new business. Does anyone have anything that they would like to speak about? Okay. Um, all right, seeing none, let's move on. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we're adjourned. So good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for coming and nice to see you all. Be safe and be well. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Rosie. Good night. Good night.